All right. Well, we are very grateful for the opportunity we have to be here today to be presenting to you. Um, I'm Blake Branham. This is Alex Bound, and this is Bradley Ripa, and we are here as from the process control group here for our company, and have been looking for at different ways that we can protect different assets within our company, and what ways we can provide better safety, because we know safety is something that is so important to us, um, especially because we don't want anything like this to ever occur here, which would be bad economically, but also, more, more importantly, it could hurt many people around. And so, as we began this project, we began looking at areas that would be most at risk within our facility. And we found that our polymers unit had, in particular, the polyethylene reactor would be one area that we could protect, uh, or we could have better safe safety controls and features around. The polyethylene reaction is very exothermic and needs tight temperature control to prevent runaway and to also prevent it from decomposing within the reactor and coking up the reactor. And the way that the reaction works is it's a fluidized bed reactor and it sends the recycle through with inert which cools the reaction and there is a heat exchanger over here which is one area that we thought could be at risk to un unwarranted disturbances, whether it be it, it losing pressure within and losing water pressure, or also losing, and maybe it gets hotter, we have too hot cooling water, or it is too cold. Different, different areas that could be at risk within that. <clears throat> so to do this, we built an S function in Simulink right here is our S function that contains our differential equations, which there are seven differential equations, and also the heat exchanger is in this model as well, in this S function. Over here we have our PAD controller that control the temperature based on by adjusting the feed rate of the catalyst. We have our disturbances over here, temperature of the feed and the temperature of the cooling water. We found that temperature of the feed doesn't really affect your model very much, which makes sense because it's just heating up the reaction if it's already hot but the temperature of the cooling water does have a, have a big effect on the system. So what we did is we tuned our, we built a, so what we did is we did a step test to the system. We fit it to an FOPDT model and found using the IMC correlations we found constants for our PID, PI controller. Um, this green line right here is our first response to the, the control. We found that it's a very slow and it's it's, it's over damp and never reaches the actual set point. So we manually adjusted the values to get a better response, which is this line right here. We found that the rise time is about 15 minutes and that it, it decays pretty fast, hence a better response for our system. So in conclusion, what you didn't see on that last graph is that the model that we made jumps from saturation limit, like it's either fully flowing the catalyst or, or stopping it. And so that's really not good for equipment and so in the future it would be good to use it try and use different kind of control maybe model predictive control or some other type of control that would allow us to you know take that into account beforehand and still have that tight temperature control but not um, jump between saturation limits to damage equipment and also in our experiment or our simulation we found the temperature control limits and up here it's a 20 degrees um, temperature increase of the cooling water and down here is about a 14 degree decrease in the cooling water and that's as much as we can handle for a disturbance and so that's kind of good to know and so in the future with more funding to work on this project it would be useful to um, add some more um, arguments that would say if it reaches higher than this or lower than the set point we'd add a poison to stop the reactor and prevent further damage to equipment and safety.